Finals actually shouldn't be played. Um, Joe mentioned throwing in some bounty for playing the Finals, but I'm not sure the two finalists are going to take him up on it. And to be honest, I don't really plan on casting it if it does happen. As uh, I did expect this to take approximately the same time as the last uh, qualifier. Now, that last qualifier had top four advanced, so it was you know, obviously going to be a little bit shorter, but... I got things to do. I got drinks to drink with with my homies. We're gonna have a viewer viewer party after this. Basically, gonna throw up a be right back screen, um, change the delay, which is gonna sort of restart, and then get some drinks ready and come back. And I'm gonna play arcade games with you guys. So, if you want to stick around, please do. It'll be right after this best of five. There we go. In the top left, hailing from Europe. It is Gung Bubanda. That is the Blue Protoss. We're on Nightshade. In the bottom right, as the Red Terran, it is Dolan. Uh, American, I want to say. But actually, I'm second guessing myself. And Gung Fu's German, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's the United States. I thought so, but I was like, hold on. I mean, Canadians and Americans. Like, what's the difference? Am I right, guys? Except in our, you know, general health and well-being and accessible government provided health care. <sighs> and Dolan's really a... Uh, I mean, he's actually got... His MMR is like 200 higher than I expected. But I don't know if that means that he is doing better or worse or, you know, because I could just be wrong. I am, uh, I am no fear dragon. I don't just watch my little my little chickies grow up into beautiful uh, roosters, I guess. <laughs> I was gonna say hens, but that doesn't. No. Um, I just have an approximate knowledge, basically, of a lot of these guys. So, <clears throat> respect the hell out of them. Being a uh, North American professional player in particular is can be very very difficult to do. Even if you are Canadian, you don't have a lot of the social safety nets that might exist. But, anyways. You're also on a server that doesn't necessarily have the best practice grounds. Um, and it's not just because, like, lol, everyone's worse. Like, not, not just because of that, because there's actually a, I see, like, I think it's, like, a few more people that are just, like, really, almost like there are a lol random Keck XD player, which can really screw up your, uh, practice if you're trying to face just, like, good mechanical players, of which Gung Fu Banda can be, but Gung Fu also can be a little bit cheesy. So Gung Fu, he's got a Zealot right now because he did not see a Barracks, Right? He saw a factory building. The barracks was actually just hidden off to the corner. The Reaper coming back to deal with the probe actually kind of revealed that. If it was proxy proxy, it would have just immediately attacked into the main. And Gung Fu kind of like, I mean, he kind of wastes money and supply on a Zealot. It's not going to be that helpful, but yeah, you know, it's something you kind of have to do because it could have easily have been a Reaper proxy, and not getting a Zealot means that you're going to lose, like, three probes with appropriate control. And this is a matchup where we have to talk about that latency. Now, it's probably east if I am guessing correctly. I don't actually know where Dolan lives, but default is to be in the best position possible for the European here, so that would be east. If it was Korea, if this was a Korean, then it'd be on west, even if Dolan would be on east and, and vice versa. So, 99% sure it's on east. Anyways, that still is sometimes bad, sometimes atrocious. Like, it kind of depends on your internet, maybe the day and time, right? Um, sometimes just randomly that ping will spike in a way that doesn't usually happen on your own home server. Like, it can be very, very annoying. So, it's something that we have to note, but I wouldn't say that PVT is really a matchup that, you know, for the Protoss side of things, like, your ping doesn't super duper affect the game. I think matches against Zerg, whether it's TVP or PVZ or... I was gonna say ZVZ, but I take it back. The first two matchups, like, I think that's when the Terran's like, oh my god, I can't micro. And the Pros is like, oh my god, I can't force field. Because the, um, the Zerg way of dealing with engagements is so much more explosive, right? We're usually, like, 70% of the time talking about bayonets, right? So much more explosive. So much like I was a second late to moving, I died. The other matchups, eh, not as much, I would say. It still sucks, don't get me wrong, but... <clears throat> if Gung Fu especially kind of plays in 
with that in mind, like, let's say he's actually really bothered by ping right now. He's just like, oh, my God. Like, every time I move, oh, Jesus. It's just like, it does nothing. Like, come on. Like, he, I think he could play styles that try and, and work with that. But he's actually going for just a typical blink follow-up here. He had to take the opening very seriously, and he did. He got the Robo, he got an Observer. He's getting shield batteries. But he is going into blink, third Nexus, three gas. And, um, yeah, I think that's fine. And I, I don't expect him to be on that level of just, like, I can't do anything. This ping is atrocious, so... Whatever he wants to do, whatever floats his boat. For Dolan, he's really tried to mix things up here by going for that hidden barracks, by going for the Banshee, and now by going for a two-base SEV pool. But the weird thing about these weird timings and, like, the lol random timing, because, like, who does this, right? Is that there's a reason they usually don't work. Against someone who actually is macroing appropriately and using their their units appropriately, so the Blink Stalkers on the front line catching whatever they can, this usually just doesn't work, even if they're not necessarily prepared for it. But in this case, Gung Fu did get a little bit of a heads up with the observer so his blink stalkers could be a little bit more on the front line but can he actually hold he's got the force field uh, at least once to buy a little bit more time here charge won't play a factor but enough stalkers can actually still win this out the scds will be great at soaking up the shots initially as we saw right there so five scds down but saving the cyclone saving the tank saving the banshees that's so much more important but a couple more warp ins, and I feel like Gung Fu can actually take this on, especially if he warps him from behind and takes out the tank fire from just blasting away all the stalkers and there's little chokes that are now getting really a lot more awkward. And actually, Gung Fu needs to think about that. He has some stalkers to the right side, maybe they blink down or something along those lines. Because he knows he needs this around to actually take care of this. And that's exactly what's going to happen here, but it's just moments away before the bunkers are done. Not a whole lot of Marines, like barely any Marines actually to put in those bunkers. Just one, that's it. An Observer is prepared to take down the Banshees, and while they provide a lot of straight-up DPS, they don't do well when they're being target-fired. Another tank comes forward with a couple of Marines, trying to take out as many Stalkers as possible to leave the Banshees to do the job. But Gung Fu's still on three bases, and can instantly warp in five, six Stalkers at a time. This has not worked, and Gung Fu actually survives this with almost... I mean, look how many Stalkers actually survived. They're low health, but there's a lot of them that survived. He survives with most, if not all, of his economy intact. He just had to stop building probes. I don't think he lost very many. And then a lot of his army intact as well. She got to take a quick look at resources lost. He did lose five stalkers and uh, five zealots. Or the five zealots even aren't even... Aren't even worth talking about. <clears throat> GG. Gung Fu. Nice defense there. Um, it really, absolutely, it helps that they actually see this coming. I think those random tank attacks can totally work if you don't see it coming because a lot of it is not just mental preparation but also like such a putting your units in the right situations so kind of looking over your natural base saying okay where are my units going to get choked up in how can i get the best concave um how can i get a surround as well right there's a lot of that like 10 second prep when you actually see it on the way that you don't have if it just suddenly appears. But I also feel like Gung Fu, even if he was totally surprised, I feel like he just, if he, you know, did what he did there, kind of just held on and was like, okay, you do damage and I'll wait. I feel like he actually still is okay because charge would have finished. Another two warp ins could have happened. Yeah, I don't know. I think, more importantly than being scouted or not scouted for Dolan, was also that his opener didn't do damage. Um, it didn't do damage with the Reaper, it didn't do damage with the Banshee, it didn't do damage as far as pushing Gungu Banda off his game. It didn't really seem that way anyways, like he mostly just did a safe, understandable, well-executed follow-up. And it didn't distract him as well, which can be the role of the Banshee sometimes, where the stalkers chase the Banshees, and then the army is like, hey, we're at your front door. Didn't do that either. So a lot of things were missing from the uh, the start there for Dolan. But yeah. All right. Game number two. Top right, it is Gung Fu Banda. Up one. The bottom left, as the Red Terran. Not going for any weird shenanigans this time. It is Dolan. And we are on Eternal Empire. But, oh, I thought Gung Fu was just going for a very fast probe scout because he was kind of cheesed in a way last game. Nope. It's going to go for his own proxy gateway. 
uh, a very brutal build on Scouted. So I talked a lot about Scouting in the uh, opposite scenario last game. Well, now it's up to Dolan to get some Scouting here. And Dolan is going to send out an SCV to go Scout. Uh, he actually sees the probe coming in from the right side. That may be a little suspicious. Does it usually do that? It may actually usually do that. Um, I can't remember quite right, right now. But anyways, he doesn't check over to the right side. Now, this SCV will see that there's no Nexus. And that is already alarm bells ringing. Because even if it was a 7x core, then Nexus, it'd still be, like, on the way. And if it's just gateway 7x core, super late Nexus, what are you really doing? What are you doing with your life? So I, I think he's got to be mindful that there's probably a proxy gateway. I'm actually going to cancel that, uh, that Zealot. Maybe he was waiting to see if this was on the up and up as far as for Dolan's build, and it is. Dolan absolutely knows what it is. He actually canceled that command center. Did he never get it? He may never got it. Oh, we did get it. Okay, so he cancels the command center. And builds a bunker, factory. This really sucks because ideally, you see this by the time you're thrown on your command center and you just put your command center on the high ground and have to cancel it. But, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, command center on the high ground, this has turned into a bit of a factory expand, but Dolan even uh, seems to be taking into account... Actually, hold on. He needs to take into account that he's going to be supply blocked. The command center won't finish as the usual timing. But that's more for later on. He still has some time before it, uh, before it hits him. So, Tech Lab on the factory. It actually skedaddles a little bit closer to the starport, so I'm wondering if he's going to be a BNG follow-up. And reactor on the barracks. Gung Fu not able to do much more from here. So it's not the ideal scenario for a Protoss player, because the ideal scenario is like, boom, cancer to command center, boom, got up to your main base, boom, stop the bunker from finishing, boom, won the game. <laughs> that's, the, that's the ideal. But it is still pretty okay. Because um, again, the command center was canceled. He's on the main. He will control the natural for a little while. And uh, the only thing he has to do now is, besides macro, make up for that very late Nexus. He also has to make sure he doesn't get surprised by, well, Banshees, basically. As Gung Fu Banda, you kind of have room to start thinking more than doing, because there's not much happening. So, if you're thinking about what could screw me over right now, what are the options we can think of? A typical 1-1-1, what am I drop? That's not going to screw him over. He can micro away from that. A, um... Like a cyclone build, like that might be actually pretty brutal, but uh, it's very rare to see that, and it only be one cyclone at a time. Banshees, banshees could screw him up. So, okay, that was funny. Um, so the banshees probably foremost on his mind, especially because Dolan just did banshees last game. Some players you might get into a rut thinking, oh, they're not a banshee player in this matchup, but I feel like if you see it once, you know to be a little more on guard in the future. And I've said, you know, before that Banshees, even when anticipated, seem to do damage. And I will stick with that, like, 90% of the time. Last game, they really did not do anything. So, I'm uh, worried that might happen again here. Dolan's attack should be stronger, considering that he didn't go for a weird build. Like, he obviously got his command center delayed. It's not the cleanest uh, tank push here either, but... I feel like this is still a better scenario for him than last game. And maybe stronger isn't the right word for this tank push, but maybe there's going to be more of a macro follow-up if he does it. He actually is going to do it? Okay, well, now he's going to pull the SCVs. <laughs> if he pulls the SCVs again, that's not macro follow-up, is it? This is just desperation. Gung Fu Banda, I mean, he's got an extra gateway here that's not going to be helpful offensively, but it's another gateway warping in, and that's actually pretty important. So he's got four gateways in total. He's got a Robo. He could try and pump out an Immortal, but we saw last game how effective just pure gateway units are. He plays a little bit risky by moving out with the Observer once more, but you know what? The Banshees... Oops, oops. Okay, that's actually a pretty big deal. Losing one Stalker and 75% another one. This actually is a good start for Dolan. Um, yeah, moving out with the Stalkers like that can be risky because the Banshees go to your probe line with two of them at a time. They actually kill your probe line, but... Uh, that was the right call for Gung Fu. He accidentally runs into the army. Didn't expect it. He loses his observer as well. And there's three Banshees once again. Third Nexus will have to be killed. And this does raise questions about the macro ability 
of the build here for Dolan as he sets down a third CC. But keep in mind that his stim and combat shields will be very late. If he does no more damage, it's still not quite enough. If he gets completely cleaned up, it's not quite enough. We're actually going to have the engagement at kind of an inopportune time. Charge still not done. Zealot still not warped in. It looks like on the other side of the map, there was a warp in. That's what happened. So seven SCDs did go down. But he needs Zealot on the front line. He needs him to have charge as well. The Guardian Shield was already used, and it was not helpful. It could be so much more helpful right here, right now. I oh, no, no. The Stalker is actually focusing right down the tanks. Don't capture the Banshees. In fact, all of them very still healthy. And the Stalker warp ins might not be enough. He didn't actually have... Uh, the appropriate number of gateways, maybe using offensive attacks was not the right call here. Gung Fu Banda, half the supply of Dolan, and Dolan's SCD push looking just the complete opposite of last game. This made this look like how in the world does Gung Fu even hold? A Gung Fu. I think there is a, definitely a couple mistakes here. Losing that one stalker and a half on the front, not great. He really got no nothing done with that no SCDs were killed no marines were sliced off and then the guardian shield this is a repair guys uh but the guardian shield not helping on the actual defense that's a pretty big deal against marine fire and uh and then using his warp ends offensively i don't know what it was it could have been seen, like one adept i'm actually gonna look but I, I think it was a couple of zealots um that's probably better back at home and then on top of all this, and this is a little bit trickier to say, but it is still true. He did not have enough gateways. He started to actually bank up a lot of minerals. And this is going to be game. Can't even break it this time. Four Banshees firing away. Now back up to almost full health. Yeah, that's not going to... The Banshees are going to win this game. Oh, one barely not targeted down. Yeah, that one. I think I did like the defensive pull here. I think he had, like, 800 minerals in the bank. And that's obviously not what you want. GG, Dolan. I'm sorry for ever doubting your build or ever doubting your push. That was brutal. I do feel like that was a little more... What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to go with powerful again, but... Streamlined, perhaps? I feel like it was a little more streamlined than last game. Uh, the first game, which was like the, the, the barracks, Reaper not working out, factory expand. It is kind of weird, though, because like they, both games ended up being a factory expand. But I feel like that was still better. I feel like that was still better executed. I'd have to like actually go in the build orders and see what exactly what the difference were timing-wise. But just thinking on the first game, you know, the Banshees tried to do something were instantly denied, and then the attack happened like a minute after that. This game, there was no attempt at using Banshees except for the main attack. I mean, that's already a, that's already a difference in timing, right? <clears throat> Anyways. Looked a little bit better there for the Terran, but also just overall worse for the Protoss. Control was a little off. Could have been the lag. And um, Macro was a little off as well. All right. It's all tied up now on Everdream. Top right, Gung Fu Banda. Bottom left, Dolan. Considering he did mostly the same attack twice in a row, I would think he does it again the third time and the fourth time and the fifth time. Need to be. But I'm not going to predict that 100% right now. If he does it a third time, then I'm going to be like, oh, okay, this is the only thing he's ever going to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna feel you know okay two times all right all right you got your like your two minutes of fame, two times two minutes. The only one well actually only one of them was fame. The other one was infamy I guess because he lost that okay I don't know my analogy is falling apart doesn't matter. But gung fu. Let's not forget. One of the big differences first game and second game, even though both are factory expands was that Gung Fu pushed him into a factory expand. It was Dolan's response, his very, very appropriate response, by the way, that started that game off. So while Gung Fu didn't really have anything done to him, you know, because he went for a proxy gateway that, you know, quote unquote, failed, he didn't lose 10 probes. Like, there's no random trade-off there. But he did have a later Nexus. 
He did have probably a later third. His gateway count probably would have been put down more sooner. You know, something along those lines. Like, maybe tens of seconds of difference, but pretty damn important. Like, his proxy gateway actually failed. As far as we consider what it's supposed to do. But failure is always, like, a really harsh word to use for a lot of build orders, because there are ways to develop out of it. There are ways that your opponent makes mistakes. But in a very clean-cut game where Dolan takes no damage... Aside from the necessary damage he has to take by canceling the command center. But otherwise, he gets to do his build. No macro mistakes, no loss SEVs. And then it makes a lot of sense that uh, he had the superior push and Gung Fu struggled on the defense. So no one going to try and do the aggression this time. Gung Fu changing things up, going for a Stargate. Thank you, Offspring1484, for the 15-month resub. Oh, okay, Dolan. He's gonna go for... Oh, oh. While I was talking, I totally missed the factory. So this isn't a three racks. But it is a three one. Still very different. So we can see two one ones in this matchup that are factory, then second barracks. But ultimately come up with the same production as uh, what we usually call two one one in TVZ. And then there is a 1-1-1, one, 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 which is the most basic thing you can do, which is what he has been doing. And then there's this, which admittedly I do not see at all. Well, this is funny. <laughs> I guess he wanted that one adept to go in. And then, well, he killed it regardless. But the other one gets away. So a little bit of adept harass, not too, not too good there. So one of the reasons that you do want a factory, you want to get a factory at all, versus Protoss is that these uh, the tech units popping out of here are what's going to save you in the early game. If you're doing a typical three racks, like literally just three racks, nothing else, um, your early game defense is usually more about a bunker as your numbers start to rise. So that's uh, pretty important. He takes no damage from the Adepts. He also doesn't let them scout, which is also pretty important. But Gung Fu... Oh, no. I don't... Hmm... I'm actually not sure why he's patrolling. He might be expecting a proxy Banshee. But Dolan is doing... Oh, okay. Actually, I do know this build. I I've never done it myself, so I didn't know the process of getting here. But I think we all kind of identify this build now that we see combat shields on the way. So combat shields, lots of marines, and you're going to have uh, some tank backup to it. Well, they're backing up each other, really. But the, the cohesion is very good, and the extra health means that it's just enough to work. But Gung Fu, yeah, I was wondering why he was staying home. Because that's actually pretty bad. Stargate's supposed to give you some of the fastest information you can get. Aside from, like, a second unit sentry or something like that. But he actually waited a long time. Now, this long time waiting was apparently because he wanted to do an attack of his own. Revelation sees a very healthy number of marines and two tanks. That's something you're not going to want to dive into. But it should also be something that's like, wait a minute. What are you doing? I think now he's going to figure it out. But I feel like he could have had much sooner scouting done. So now the question is, would it have been better to scout this earlier and just focus on defending? Or is it okay that he scouted it later but was actually going to do an attack anyways, thus has units out on the field? We're watching this scenario unfold, so we'll see. But, um, hello? Loses track of the army. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the SCVs are found. But, ah, oh, there's so little to do against this. I mean, you still have a Cyclone in the mix alongside, you know, two dozen Marines. That's going to focus right down any Phoenix attempt to lift a tank. Gung Fu's going to have to cancel. Well, actually, okay. Just going to have to let this third base die. That's not going to happen. It's going to go for a base trade. Dolan actually anticipates this. It's a high ground tank, but there's so many Phoenix and not a whole lot of Marines here on the defense that he's going to be able to lift it. 
He actually lifts a couple of the Marines first. Good focus fire from Dolan to try and keep his tank alive. And actually, he's going to work. The mass repair should also be going on it, though, to actually hold this. But the attack on the other side is going down as well. And Gung Fu, neither one of them has a lot of defense in their actual main or natural bases. But that tank lasted a lot longer than they thought it would. There's no warpins to help out here. The Oracle has a ton of energy that will help deplete these SCVs. But there's still so much army left over for Dolan. Both of them killing each other's economies. Both of them killing each other's production. But Gung Fu, he's still desperate trying to get out that charge. He still has the warpins in his main base. He has a force field to buy time, and that is actually super damn critical. He goes for one force field. He's going to have a second one. It looks like he can't afford a third one. Actually, he does have a second one. The tank blast takes out the sentry, and that one last force field could have been so helpful. It looks like charge is actually depowered, so no concern over there. Dolan has lost all of his SCVs and has also lost his production here. No reinforcing tank for him, but so many SCVs still on the front line. And the production now finally going to go down for Gung Fu Banda. He's desperately trying to get a Void Ray. It's going to pop out in a second here, but it's going to be so difficult to actually utilize this against the tanks with so many Marines still holding on. The Sentry can't really help anymore. It's just tickling all these units, and Gung Fu Banda is forced to tap out. Dolan, the two-base tank push machine, is threatening to take out Gung Fu Banda. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <sighs> that was at least a fun game. I, uh... I don't know what that looks like if Gung Fu tries to defend. But I feel like, especially if Dolan takes the time to kill the third, that's a good chunk of time. That's what, like maybe two extra warpins? Maybe an extra warpin and one or two more Phoenix? Not a bad thing to get. I don't know, that's actually just a really hard call. Especially because Gung Fu wasn't, he wasn't just pure macro and then, oh, I have to, to defend. He was thinking of his own attack, which failed in the sense it didn't do anything. But it didn't sacrifice itself for nothing either. So that's why I was posing that question, like, well, he has army. <laughs> just, is it going to be better than waiting a little while longer, building up your macro, building up your production, and then building an army? More akin to that first game we saw of the day, where Gung Fu, that's so far the only game that he won. In the bottom right, as the blue Protoss, it's Gung Fu Banda down one. And his last life. In the top left, sending out an SCV, it is the Red Terran, Dolan. I really like Dolan's play. I mean, I think some people out there are just going to reduce this to, like, lol, can't macro, just cheese. And, like, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe if Dolan were to play all five games, all three games, macro, and loses, then we're just like, you know, whatever. But it's very odd how we can do that when we don't like a player or when we're biased against a player just because he's, like, NA or something like that. Yet then, you know, praise Maru <laughs> for much of the same thing. I just think this is like a good idea. Like this might be the way he plays against Protoss because he does struggle in the matchup or he thinks this is actually just the best thing to do. This might be him saying, yeah, I don't know if I'm actually better than Gung Fu, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cheese him out. Like it doesn't really matter what the reason is. What matters is that it's working. I don't know how often Dolan plays against Gung Fu or how much he really thinks that Gung Fu would even be better than him. I'm actually not sure what Gung Fu's MMR is. Maybe it's not that much higher, even though they're on different servers. But the point is, it's working. And Dolan going to continue with the aggression. Double Rax Reaper against Protoss. Triple Rax Reaper against Protoss. Don't see that too often. Actually, yeah, yeah, it has to be. I was like, he's going to make one Reaper and then go into Marines? No, no, no. He's got two gases back at home. What? Can you quadruple Rax Reaper or Protoss? Is it quadruple? I feel like I've seen you Thermal do this. But I really wasn't expecting quadruple. I thought it was three. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, my bad. Four Barracks Reaper Rush. Dolan, you madman. Gung Fu is trying to figure out what this is, by the way. Now, so far he's been tank pushed, but that doesn't mean that there's not a potential for a proxy factory or a proxy starport. Something that he might have been thinking of last game. Because you're gonna go scouting around for something. Um, you know, that first game, it was a barracks just kind of close to Dolan, but he's not going to find it. He's not going to find it. He's not expecting it. Two Reapers suddenly appear, and now he knows what it is. 
He's gonna chrono out a unit no matter what was happening, but he's, he's gotta make sure to actually retain his unit. And I think he also has to get a shield battery. Ooh, Dolan not retaining his units. One Reaper might be okay to lose, but any more than that. I don't know. Oh, shield battery on the natural, uh, or close to the natural, is kind of an interesting place to put it. I, I usually see it here, I feel. Four Reapers, you know, initially it doesn't look too bad. You know, like, oh, okay, it's not gonna kill my soccer that quickly, but then suddenly... Suddenly Reaper shots, when there's eight of them shooting at once, aren't too bad. And uh, not to mention the grenades they also have to throw down. With three stalkers out, this already feels like it's okay for Gung Fu. He's chronoing out that warp gate. He's getting a second gateway. It is about just units right now. Extra technology is not really going to help you. I mean, technically an oracle can't be shot at, but you know you don't want to really try and buy time for an oracle. An immortal actually probably wouldn't even help that much. If he bounced around a lot. And uh, Twilight Council, forget about it. But just production. This last stalker is going to pop out. It's going to turn into a warp gate right after that. We had a couple more Reapers die. Taking out a single stalker. Still something that I think can teeter totter depending on the grenades, but. Ooh, the shield battery! It's a good thing he placed one in that natural. If he didn't place one in the main base mineral line, that actually is probably two stalkers instantly gone. Um, but I think Gung Fu has this. Yeah. Very tricky of Dolan to mix up not just the type of cheese he was doing, but also something that you would typically think abuses that that's a. Uh, Server issue. Not really here. Not quite up to the sock out that one shots the Reapers. Going out aggressively against them. Might have been a huge mistake there from Gung Fu. If he was at a one shot potential, which apparently six stalkers, I guess, um, then that might have been the okay call there, but you know what? With three gateways warping in, never mind. It's not that worrisome. Not that worrisome. Gung Fu's still healthy mining on one base, and that's going to be enough to warp in three gateways, and that will be enough to win the game. GG. Namshire says Gung Fu was like 6.7. I, I, th I thought he was like really high up on MMR and EU, but I'm going to be honest. The games today actually made me kind of like, wait a second, am I wrong? <laughs> but thank you for that confirmation. So yeah, like an 1,000 MMR difference. And on these different servers. You would really think that Gung Fu, I, I said that I thought it would take this 3-1 at the very least. And then he was actually down 2-1? That's why I was like, hold on. Am I crazy? Oh, it's 2-2. Two, two. Maybe the stars will align again. I think Dolan's got to try and do another tank push, right? Because it's, it's what's been working. Purity and industry with the last map. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, I don't. I feel like tank pushes would have suck on this map. But hold on here. So the first step is getting through the chokes on this map. But when you're through the choke, does the tank push something get good? That up two to two. Twelve o'clock position. Gung Fu Banda. Three o'clock position. Dolin. And to highlight that little spot I was talking about. So, like, you know, you're doing a little thing. It's two-base tank push. You walk up this ramp. Well, bam! Force field. You're like, oh, no, I'm going to be force field over there. So I'm just going to go over here. Could be a force field here. Unlikely, though, because they have to walk uh, pretty far around to get it. But but it can happen. Well, bam, force field. You get up the ramp. It's an extra how many seconds? To, to anything that's actually important, especially if like their third base can be sacrificed. If the third base isn't important, isn't important, then how long? Is this ad? Ten seconds? <laughs> um. Yeah, that's actually a substantial difference. So, yeah, I can't. No, nah, there's no way tank pushes are gonna be good here, right? I mean, the tricky part about tank pushes is that the force field. Force field range is actually pretty substantial. Um. Is it? No, wait. Hold on. Okay. You know what? I was going to guess the numbers, but now I'm like super doubting myself. <laughs> it's like eight or something, right? It's it's actually pretty far, but never far enough against Zerg, it feels like. You know what I mean? And then Siege Tank is 
See, that's why I was doubting myself. I was like, siege, what is a siege tank range? It's one of the numbers I actually used to know. But now I'm doubting myself. And then of course there's the whole thing about like, it doesn't see as far as it shoots, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, my, my point was trying to say that sometimes that sentry tries to force field and with a tank sieged up, it actually gets blasted. So it can't force field, so on and so forth. But I don't know, I'm just, I'm just looking at this and I'm like, I don't know if it's actually a good idea, man. I don't know. But Dolan did let through this map through the cracks. So they had vetoed Zen and something else I'm not thinking of, Golden Wall, right? So this one got, got through. So what else does Dolan have in store? to ignore stalkers and ravage the mineral line actually with the reaper uh, attack we saw last game it's definitely more about just stopping them from having any production like if they're only at any point in time with one two or even three stalkers against a growing number of reapers well they're screwed so it's that teeter-totter of like unit retention who has a better unit retention and dolan right from the get-go had lost a reaper which i thought was was pretty bad but it was like eh, maybe and no 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 Gunkle also had a pretty appropriate response. I didn't realize the natural... I keep saying natural, but the, like, the edge shield battery was useful. But it was. And then the uh, shield battery in the main. It's very useful. So yeah, it's about keeping that stalker count low. The, the probes don't... They're not... How to put it? Like, if you target the probes, you lose your reapers. And... Even if you kill, like, six probes, it's not better than keeping that soccer count low. From what I've seen, anyways, as far as defense goes for the Protoss. Anyways. Um, so Dolan does his game three tactic again. The 1-1-2. One, one, <laughs> That's what we're gonna call it. SCV pool. No, it's still a tank push. I mean... It's a tank push that changes out... The potential for Banshee harass, and the Banshee is distracting, and the cloak, you know, X factor, right? And instead gives you a handful of extra Marines as well as combat shields. But it is certainly the most direct tank push you're going to do. Every time we saw Gung Fu move out to stall out the tank push when there are Banshees around, he actually could have sacrificed uh, a dozen probes in that push out, because the shield battery doesn't stop two Banshees. But it worked out every time, because Dolan was mostly using them as a forward push. He tried once in the first game, and they didn't do anything, so he stopped trying. But they kind of complicate things. This push is kind of just like, please let me in, please let me kill you. And if we're not going to be talking about Gung Fu's uh, Stargate builds, you know, the Oracle Phoenix being kept at home bulking up some units for an attack and then being like, oh, I can't attack you. Like, we're not talking about that kind of weirdness. Then we're talking about Gung Fu playing his game. Which, if he had lost, if whenever he loses against his tank pushes, it's kind of a game that he either sets himself behind, proxy gateway, or yeah, kind of sets himself behind, doing an attack that can't actually attack, and then having a base trade, and it gets really, really wonky and weird. And What's it like when he's just doing a normal... Not necessarily super macro build, actually. No third nexus quite yet, but a normal build where he just has saturation and builds units. And also force fields the ramp. <laughs> like what? I I feel like this is gonna be so much better. And Gung Fu, like he's actually not even playing around. Can he hold this push with a third nexus? Maybe. Maybe even probably. But why even bother? Why not just, like, you know what your opponent's going to do, even without actually seeing it, because this guy's been doing tank pushes all damn day long. Just two base charge lot. I think that's uh, very called for. I don't see any many charge lots being warped in yet. He's going to try and front out an immortal as well, which hasn't happened so far in these, uh, in these games. He's trying his best to micro anything down, anything at all. So four ICBs go down. Uh, that force field... I guess it's good enough, but the one sentry is taken out. The second sentry has another force field. This is the dynamic I was talking about, by the way. Is that the force field is a great idea until it gets blasted before it sets on the force field. And you're like, oh, that didn't work. But yeah, and I'm, I just, like, the other part about this map is that, like, as soon as you get up the damn ramp, you're still in a huge concave area. Even if Gungu was all coming from the natural, even if that was the case, that's still, like, a lot of room for him to maneuver. 
But wow, do those zealots get destroyed. Oh my god, is it actually gonna work? This is actually gonna work. Gung Fu with like a 270 surround did not take out as much as I thought he would. Now, most of the SCVs are down, but he lost a lot of his stalkers. He lost a ton in that trade. Not six stalkers and nine zealots. Oh no. Shit, why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing this build? Second Immortal is about to pop out. Shield Battery could buy some more time on that Nexus. Doesn't have to. Actually, oh no, it's Stalkers. Oh no, stop. Don't no, need every single unit on the front line, including probably those probes. Oh no, the Immortal is also to be targeting down that, uh, that tank, and it took so long to do so. And now it's going to be jumped upon. He's going to get that last tank, and now it's going to be killed. Probes get the tank kill. What? How? When? Why? They did. They got it. They got it. And now the Immortal goes down. The Shield Battery's out of juice. The Stalkers are all that's left over. No medevac healing on these Marines. But they got combat shields. They got Stim. They're going for the kill. 19 probes down. Dolan actually had even workers. Also gets the Nexus. And Gung Fu Banda. Oh no, another tank. A medevac as well. Dolan's actually going to do it, man. He's going to defeat Gung Fu in a best of five. Oh my god. I did not expect this to happen. I thought this was going to be a map very in favor of Gung Fu's defense, and I was so wrong. What? What? No. Shit. European Schmeropian. I don't... America. Oh, man. <clears throat> Dolan gets the qualification spot. Gung Fu will have to try again next week. Hmm.